Hello, this week's topic is the moon at dawn. If you were seeing the moon at dawn, logically that meant that either you had risen early or that you had spent the whole night awake. If you had done the latter, then the likelihood was that you had something on your mind to keep you from sleeping, and so you are unlikely to be feeling happy. As we shall see from the selection this week, the poets preferred to leave the exact cause of their distress vague in these poems. It was enough to know that it existed. Kotowariya, miru hodo monaku, akenumeri, yofukaku izuru, yama no ha no tsuki. How natural it is that, before I have had a chance to see, dawn seems to arrive, emerging deep within the night, the moon from yonder mountain's edge. Akinaka's poem is an example of what I've just been talking about. His speaker has been so wrapped up in whatever it is that's bothering him that dawn and the moon's disappearance comes as a, as a surprise. If you remember the poems from a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that autumn was when the moon was at its brightest and most beautiful. So, for anyone of sensitivity and culture not to even notice it, they must have had something very distressing on their mind indeed. Iku toseo, sugushiku nura, aki no yo no ariaki no tsuki o wagatomo ni shite. How many are the years that I have seemed to spend this way? Autumn nights at dawn, with the moon as my only companion. Nakazane's poem suggests a much longer period of distress. Autumn in Waka could refer metaphorically to the latter part of one's life, just as it can in English. And Nakazane's work here evokes an old man, sleepless perhaps because of a bodily discomfort, looking back at his life, and at the years spent alone. The moon, of course, is eternal, but he is not. An awareness of, um, an, an awareness of mortality runs through the speaker's plaintive query. Ariaki no tsuki no keshiki mo wabishiki ni miseba ya mono o omou sakari wa. At dawn, the moon's appearance, too, is pitiable indeed. Should I reveal the profusion of my melancholy thoughts? Toshiyori returns the sequence to a single night of distress. Why this is, we don't know. But just as the moon at dawn is a pale shadow of its nighttime self, so is the speaker of the poem, worn out and worn down with sorrow. Nagatsuki no Hatsuka no Tsuki to Morotomo ni Neyam emo ira de akashitsuru kana On the longest month's twentieth day, not the moon nor any other has entered in my bedchamber where I greet the dawn. By contrast, Tadafusa gives us a bit of light relief. It's the twentieth of the ninth month. In AQ4, the year this sequence was produced, that equated to Friday the 27th of October, and the moon has waned somewhat, so it's not so full in the sky. In fact, it's so dim that its light can't even penetrate the speaker's bedroom, where she is lying alone, with no lover come to call. There's a resigned air of frustration in the poem, and this is the only poem in this sequence where the reason for the speaker's unhappiness is clear. Incidentally, this is a somewhat casual poem, in more decorous and formal contexts, using the word nea, bedchamber, was frowned upon as being overly crude. Iwama yuku isaragawa no sewashiki ni warete yadoreru ariake no tsuki. Rushing through the rocks, the rivulet runs so fast that it splits the resting dawn time moon. Kanemasa breaks with the theme so far, and instead describes a natural scene. Water from a stream is rushing through a crack in the rocks, and striking a pool on the other side, and shattering the reflection of the moon sitting there.
あれやけの月の光を共にしてまだ踏み慣れぬ山人に添える。At dawn, the moon's light does keep me company on yet untrodden mountain paths upon my way. Higo remains outdoors, but brings back the human context with her poem. Her speaker is not distressed at an early rising traveller heading off to some unknown destination she has never visited. Perhaps she's making a visit to a temple or a beauty spot. In any case, she's alone in the mountains with only the moon as a companion. Women of Higo's class, of course, were unlikely to have been travelling alone or walking for that matter. So she's using some poetic license here, or perhaps speaking in a man's voice. Kane no oto ni odoro kasarete nishi e yuku suki no hikari o nagametsuru kana. The sound of bells startled me as upon the westward, westward drifting moon's light I turned my gaze. Finally, We have Daishin's poem. I like to see this as building on her sister's work, in that the bells she mentions would be assumed to belong to a temple. So we have Higo's traveller possibly going to visit a lonely temple in the mountains, while Daishin's speaker is at home. She spent the night gazing at the moon, something which was believed to give a lady wrinkles, and so something which should be avoided if you wanted to keep your beauty. The time has gone by while she has remained lost in her thoughts, when suddenly she started from her reverie by the tolling of a temple bell announcing the new day. That's it for this week. The next topic is storms.